Hi guys, welcome back to SHK Excel World. I'm Salim Heather, and we are working on the most important part of the financial model, which is fixed assets. So we have already talked about how the cost element of the fixed asset working can be automated. So it was very simple, but very informative. So today we are going to work on the second element of the fixed asset, which is depreciation calculation. So we will be working on the straight line depreciation method and we will automate the depreciation calculation with a single formula. So let us start. So now for calculating depreciation, we know that uh, with respect to the straight line depreciation method, your asset is fully consumed in the useful life of the asset. So for plant and machinery, which has a useful life of six years, as mentioned here, your asset should be fully depreciated. Just write equal to and refer to this cost. Press F4 divided by the life of the asset. Press F4 and press enter. So this is the depreciation or consumption of the asset which should continue up till 6 years. So at the end of 6 years if we add up all of these depreciation amounts. So these equal to 1 million which is equal to the cost of the asset which means that the asset is no longer in existence or useful at the end of 6th year and in the 7th year we should purchase a new asset and that asset will be consumed over the next 6 years. So from this year onward your depreciation will be the cost, new cost divided by the life of the asset and this should continue up till 12th year. So this is the depreciation we want. But one thing is that it is not dynamic. And you, if you have a list of assets, then you have to do all of this again and again for all of the assets. So this is not recommended. And this is what we want to make dynamic and automatic. So what we are going to do is that we are going to write in a formula equal to the cost of the asset. You do not need to anchor anything because we want it, the effect to trickle down and then divide it with the life of the asset and lock in the column and press enter. But you also have to add in the previous year's depreciation. So what this means is that whenever a new asset is added, its depreciation will be added into your calculation. And press enter. Now copy it to the rest of the cells and see what happens. So it is going on fine up till the end of 6th year. But in the 7th year, what it is doing is that it is, it is adding up the depreciation for this year as well as the depreciation for the new asset. So effectively, it is calculating depreciation for this plus this divided by 6. So this is wrong because your previous asset has been fully consumed. So you will have to deduct this amount from this year's depreciation to achieve at or arrive at the right value. So what we can do to achieve this one? We can use the help of offset formula. Offset formula is just like an index match formula which uh, uses the help of number of rows and number of columns from a particular reference cell. So you can tell the formula to move up or down a certain number of rows or after or before a certain number of columns from a particular cell. So you will see as to how we are going to achieve this one. Just write equal to offset and the reference cell is basically the cost of the asset for that particular addition. So no need to uh, log this one as well. And we are going to tell the formula to remain in this particular row which is 28 in which the plant and machinery additions are being displayed. No need to move up or down. And press 0 for remaining the same row. And for the number of columns, we are going to tell the formula that you have to move back 
a certain number of years which will be equal to the life of the asset. So for telling the formula to move backward you write a minus sign and refer to the life of the asset. Again lock in the column because when we copy it downward it will be copied easily to the next asset as well. Now move back to your uh, working sheet and press close parenthesis and press enter. So the formula has given an error because we have asked the formula to move back six columns. So we can see that from this particular cell reference, if we move back six columns, one, two, three, four, five. So there are only five columns, there is no sixth column. So let us copy this to the next one. And now it can move to the sixth column backwards. One, two, three, four, five, six. So what the formula is doing, it is picking a value from this particular cell, which is A28, which is in the sixth column backward from the reference cell. If I write my name here, it will pick up my name. So offset formula is moving a certain number of rows and columns and picking up a value from a particular cell reference. So this is what we wanted and you will see what we are going to achieve from this formula. Copy it to the next cells. So here you can see that in the seventh year it has moved back six columns and picked up the value from the first column or the first year. So this is what we wanted and if I divide this value with the life of the asset and lock in the column here and now copy it to all of the cells. So here we have achieved the value which is 166667 which we wanted to deduct from this particular uh, calculation to arrive at the correct depreciation for this seventh year. So let us modify this formula so that it is equally applicable to previous years as well. We will say that if the year number lock in the row, if it is greater than the life of the asset, press F4, lock in the column only, then it should use the offset formula and calculate what we want. Otherwise, it should return the zero value and bracket close. Now copy it to all of the cells and see what happens. So now the error has gone. We can easily copy this formula with all of its contents and go into the previous calculation and minus or deduct this from that calculation and press enter. Now we can copy to all of the cells and see the magic happening. So here we go. Now we do not need these calculations, read these ones and see. In the seventh year, we have a new asset which has a depreciation of 264,000 and it continues till the end of 12th year and we can see that its sum is equal to the cost of the asset and then onward we have the new asset at 2.5 million and it continues up till the end of 18th year and the total depreciation equals to the value of the asset. Now we can easily copy it to the rest of the cells. If we copy it to the rest of the cells, here we go. So the furniture which had a cost of 200,000 actually had a useful life of 8 years. Means that 25,000 depreciation for 8 years and here it goes up till the end of 8th year. Total cost and total depreciation now matches. And from then there is a new addition of the asset and the depreciation is now calculated on the basis of the new cost. So we have done with the depreciation, all of the hard work has now paid off. We will just add up all of this depreciation for all of the years, change the format, refer this to the accumulated depreciation, we have already considered that 
we are not considering any disposal for simplicity. So this will be our opening balance for the depreciation and this will be our depreciation for the year and copy it to the list of cells and we now just need to refer the cost which is the closing cost and refer the accumulated depreciation from here press enter and we have to deduct accumulated depreciation from cost and now we can easily copy it to all of the cells so we have our working ready so let us quickly link all of these elements into our financial statement so first it is the depreciation so deduct the depreciation from your net profit so this is our depreciation for the year only so this is depreciation for the year and copy it to the rest of the cells so this is now our net profit before tax so there is no taxation because we have a loss for the year and now we can move on to the cash flow statement so since the purchase of assets is cash outflow we can deduct it from the total cash flow working so this is our additions from fixed asset working and which is negative and let's assume that the purchase of fixed asset is financed out of the equity so we can easily refer this purchase of assets so every time there is a purchase of asset there is an equity injection this is for simplicity and you can see here that we are only left with the fixed asset to be referred into the balance sheet equal to so we want to refer the book value so here is the book value and we can copy it to the rest of the cells your balance sheet is now balanced and your working is final so when i worked out this solution for the first time i was really excited and wanted to share this solution with all of you guys i hope you are as excited as i am so do not forget to subscribe to shk excel world and do share this solution with all of your friends because it is definitely very interesting and has made my life very easier so till next video bye bye